because we had discussed the um, the Club New York shooting, um, and somebody did it. I saw somebody did an interview, and they had mentioned something about. Uh, they made a good point about the gunpowder. Well, Puff should have been tested for gunpowder if he had really shot a gun. How does that whole thing work? That doesn't always work all the time. About that's a paraffin test, where you test gun residue on a person's hand and stuff like that. I don't know if that was done back then with, with Puff. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's a long time. But, again, but I'm sorry, but you had mentioned to me off camera that their lawyers could have stepped in and denied that. How does that? Is that? Yeah, they could have stepped in and said, "Look, you know, my client's arrested, and when you're, you're arresting him, and if, if they wanted to conduct the test, they would have to probably deal with the district attorney with that. The district attorney would have to be notified and told that we conducted a paraffin test and on his hands. Not to say that the, the NYPD couldn't do it." But they would really talk to someone first. Usually when you have cases like that, that are that high profile, you got to talk to someone in the district attorney's office. You just don't make moves on your own. Even the homicides. Even, I can arrest somebody for a homicide if I'm a cop, right, a detective, but you have to get approval from the DA's office to process it. You can't, you can't arrest a guy, but if the DA's office says no good, then it's no good. They have to have the approval because they have to ride the case. They call it riding DA's, where they ride the case all the way through central booking, until it goes to, you know, from, central, from the time you arrest to the time the case goes to central booking until possibly a grand jury and the person gets indicted. They ride that case. The, usually the DA does. But even if they did they do a gun residue, mind you, this is a club setting where a bunch of people, I'm pretty sure, um, are very close together. Even if you're not the one who fired the shot, this is just... You, you could still have gun residue on you, right? I'm pretty sure if... You could, like you if, could. For example, J-Lo could have had gun residue. People, uh, uh, the bodyguard could have had gun residue. Yeah, but these people were very high profile by, at that time. I remember showing up that night when they called me and I left my house to go to this, to Manhattan. Right. And you, you got to remember, Puffy was in the cell, J-Lo was in the... That's a radiator. J-Lo was in another room, and they were separate from each other. So... Um, and I don't think that they were going to do something like that, especially in those, those um, people, the, the high-profile people that were involved, unless they had direct evidence that that happened. You know what I'm saying? Usually, when you have a murder case and you have a guy who shoots a guy, right, and you got the guy, you may do a, that paraffin test there where it shows gun residue. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, it wasn't done. And, and I'm just saying it's not done in every case because I've been around, you know, over 20 years in law enforcement, but... I've never seen it done all the time. Maybe it was done once or twice, but never for every case. Right, because it just brings me back to the Tory Lanes. Because I know for a fact they did a uh, gun residue test on on all of them, and I believe that all of them, almost all of them, except Megan, had gun residue on. Yeah, because the gun when you shoot the gun, <laughs> when you shoot that gun, or whatever happened then, the residue gets on everybody. But back then, in the Tory Lane case, like I said, more of his stuff was, you know, Megan saying that he shot her. It was her word against his, really. And she had an injury. And then I think there was a, a stylist or somebody, because there was another girl she did an interview. Yeah, yeah. I think she was there. And they were saying that, that Tori did it. And Tori got convicted. He's in jail. And hey, listen, he's a talented uh, artist. Super talented, yeah. He's super talented, that guy. I like his music. Me too. So to, to him to go to jail is just... And to get involved so, in something like that. Yeah. Something so... Fr if you look at it, if you look back at it, you say to yourself... Why would you get involved in something so stupid, shooting someone in the foot or whatever, playing with a gun? Why? You're here to make music and to go out and make money and live a good lifestyle, take yourself from where you were to where you are now, and why would you do something like that? It was like unbelievable. But you know what? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by a lot of things. But let's say, referring to that case, how come he was, they were, I think by the time they were booked, they, were, they had done a gun residue, a gunpowder residue test. LA, LAPD was different at the time. I, you know, every, every agency is different. Really different. Right? Every they state do is things. different. So at that time, maybe they, I, they did do the drug, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, the gun paraffin test on him. But, I mean, like I said, in that case, it was different because it happened right then and there, and the cops were there. And I guess LAPD decided that, you know, let's do this test, and they came back. But if, if, your gun residue was on everybody, then that makes the case tougher because now you got six people with gun residue who had the gun. I'm sorry, maybe not everybody. I'm just giving you an idea, but I'm right, just right. saying, like, if you have several people, then who had the gun? If this person touched the gun, that person touched the gun. Right, right. That, that's what's going to come back. and you're Because it's when you fire the gun. You have to fire it. Mm. 
and it comes back. But then people will say to yourself, like, okay, well, she's got it, he's got it. Right. That case, like I said, that case still to this day, it, 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 uh, it, it, it woke up the music industry as well. Because mm-hmm. when Tory Lane went to jail for all those, those years, everybody was like, whoa. Yes, you know? Yeah, you they got, never thought he would get that time, that amount of time. Yeah, he got 10 years. Yeah. They would never thought. Casanova's in prison right now. There's a lot of these uh, uh, rappers, man, like you said. The government's not playing. The YSL trial's still going on down there right, in, right. in Atlanta, Georgia, on the Rico. Yeah, there's a whole shit show. So, yeah, so that case is, is still out there. And, you know, if you see that they're not tolerating this stuff and the mm-hmm. problem you have and I said this before when you have cases not like Diddy's Diddy's case well Diddy's case too I could say there's always collateral damage right. to people and and that's what hurts the most because uh, people get affected by it right you know 